She came to the alibi. I'd never seen her in there before. And she stood in the doorway. She ordered a ginger ale and played a song on the jukebox. She talked to me about when we were kids and said I liked it here then. So we talked for a while and she seemed kind of far away and sad. She didn't even ask me to drive her anywhere or tell me about some crazy ideas for a band or a play or a story. After about an hour, she said, I'm going to go. And I thought she meant she was going home, but then I realized she was never coming back. I had always dreamed of New York, an impossible ideal I got from my mother. My mom only visited once to see a new museum of cosmetology they were opening on Fifth Avenue. She never got over that Circle Line tour and the fact that she was only seeing the Big Apple as an outsider. Ah, uh, New York, like the Emerald City of Oz, everything would be perfect there. And all my childhood games and schemes, all my stories and imaginations had been placed square in a geography I'd never visited. I saw New York for the first time driving into town in a family from St. Louis's car. I gorged my eyes on the skyline, all those skyscrapers like flashy fingernails growing on the hands of a small town manicurist. It hurt my soul that first time seeing New York City, but I was not yet a part of its history. And I resolved that whatever was happening in those concrete caverns and penthouses and harbors, I would not be left out.